کبوترم هوایی شدم ببین عجب گدایی شدم السلام علیکم و ویلکم بک تو هاوز لایف دی شو وی دیسکاس وات هاوز لایف از ریلی لایک فور هاوز استودنتس لیوینگ هیر این دی هولی سیتی اف قم This is my husband Muzaffar Abbas Haider and this is my wife Saida Fatima Ali. Now there are a lot of questions out there that viewers such as yourselves have about the house life in Qom and that is why we are here to give you some insight into our lives in Qom. It's been really cold. Very very cold. We've like, been like so cold we have been sh- shivering in the house. I mean, you think of Iran as being a really hot country in the, in a desert region, but my goodness, is it cold. Somebody made a little snowman. It was it was snowing. Okay, can you believe that? In Qom, it snowed so much. It's snowing. I'm talking to my mom as always. <laughs> Then you can see everything that's going on. And over here, it's all it's all the same. It's all the same. Yeah, when it started to snow, it was so beautiful. It, we just stepped outside. We were like, wow. It's actually snowing. So basically, yeah, we have a story to tell you guys. So what happened is, a night with uh one night, me and Muzaffar were discussing, and we both were like saying, "Oh my god, it's so cold. We need to get some blankets." And then I was telling him, "Muzaffar, it's kind of getting hard to cook on a tiny stove because we have to rush here and there." Yeah, so we it's were cooking, taking we've time. Cooking, we've been cooking on a yeah. tiny stove. You guys um, have we, seen the stove, get, remember? Blankets are quite expensive here, and then we were like worrying about. Uh, well, not worrying, but alhamdulillah, everything's provided for us. But like we were just like we wanted little things. Like we want, we needed a mirror. We did. We needed a mirror to look at. You know, check ourselves out in the morning yeah. before we leave for madrasa. And uh, uh, because it's getting really cold, we have a marble floor. We needed some carpets. We needed some carpets, yeah. and we needed some blankets as well. Mm-hmm. But what happened is uh, that same day, a lady called us, and she said. Uh, I'm gonna come to your house to visit you, and we were like, okay, why is she coming? You know, because we weren't sure what's happening. And but we didn't know who yeah. this lady was. So what happened is the next day, a lady with her husband, her husband's a sheikh. Yeah. He came to our house, and then he really said, really well managed, very sheikh. nice, such a nice person. Like the way he was talking, it made you feel special about yourself. And then I noticed, we noticed actually that he was looking at our house, and he was like, like he was saying, it doesn't it get too cold in the night and stuff. So he and his wife said, "You both can come to a. There's a place where you can take whatever you want." So he took us to um, a house, and uh, we're looking around, and we're like, "Okay, that's cool. What, what's this?" Anyway, he said, "Okay, you see this this uh, cooker? Do you want it? It's yours. Do you want it?" Like he showed us a whole pile of blankets. He showed us a, a big wardrobe and a huge mirror. And he was like, "This is all yours now." I was like, "What do you mean it's mine? I can't take this. It doesn't belong to me." He was like, "It does now. It's yours." And he pretty much forced us to take it. So confused. Why are we so, Alhamdulillah. If you remember back to our last episode, we were explaining how Allah provides for you from from ways that you can never imagine. We read that beautiful verse of the Holy Quran, and. Um, This is exactly what happens. I mean, we need it. Everything that we needed, somehow, just by some weird fluke, it just came into our possession. So when it's as cold as it is, it's really difficult to drag yourself out of bed for class sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of class, we have a question from one of our viewers. Here they are. Assalamualaikum. My name is Sayyid Rahim and I'm from Tanzania. And my question for you guys is, what are Hausa cities like? Uh, what subjects do you guys take, and what language do they teach in Hausa? Right. So you want to know about the subjects that we'll be studying here, the curriculum. Yeah. Okay. So there are a number of subjects. People assume that when you come to Hausa, you know, they have a vague understanding of what you're going to be studying. You're going, you're going to be studying Islam. But what is Islam? You see, at the time of uh, Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salam. His student Jabir ibn Hayyan is said to be the father of modern chemistry. You know why? Because he uh, studied science, the science of chemistry, under Imam Jafar Sadiq, and it was Jabir ibn Hayyan who spread that knowledge throughout the land. What is necessary for us to be studying today? At that time, Imam Jafar Sadiq, when he established the Hausa, they were studying sciences. Today, you can study that anywhere. 
What does the world need? It needs a certain direction. Right now we have the we have the fuel, we have the energy, we we have the ability to explore beyond the stars, you know, we have so much ability and technological advancements, but we don't have direction. So what we're studying right now is inshallah something that will give the human race some direction. So the Holy Prophet said, I have come to perfect akhlaq. So akhlaq is one of the core subjects that you study when you come here. So what is akhlaq? Akhlaq is, uh, people translate it as manners, but it's actually a lot deeper than that. It's about identifying spiritual diseases and how to cure those diseases. As well as that, you'll be studying sarfanahu. Sarfanahu is uh, arguably among the more difficult subjects. A lot of people find that very challenging. I've I seen I him do. struggling to, he was like about to cry, he was like, he had an exam, he said, I can't do it because it's so hard. You do, you end up pulling your hair out. It re is really frustrating. You see, in the Holy Quran, it says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna anzalna hu Quranan Arabian la'allakum ta'aqilun. Indeed, we have sent it down as an Arabic Quran that you might understand. Nahu is a science of Arabic grammar which was founded by Imam Ali himself. So people ask the question, if you're going to study Arabic, why are you going to Iran when their native language is Farsi? Well, I remember t the teacher was actually saying this in class. He was teaching us Quran and he actually said, uh, at the time of the Holy Prophet, one of the companions, a Farsi speaking companion, who, whose mother tongue was Farsi. So why not Farsi? As Salman al-Farsi, uh, people were mocking him for his accent. Rasulullah turned to the people and he said, don't make fun out of him. Because one day his people will teach your people how to recite the Quran. Whoa. Yeah. And then, and that, the funny thing is, that was a teacher telling us that, sitting in a, in a classroom in Iran. <laughs> So you'll be studying akhlaq, you'll be studying sarf and nahu, you'll be studying history, which they call tarikh, you'll be studying adabiyat farsi, which is Farsi grammar. You'll fiqh. also be studying uh, fiqh and usul is also one of the core subjects that you'll be studying later on. Uh, in the initial years, you won't be uh, diving in so deeply, but you will be studying ahkam, which is basically um, the rulings derived by ma the majas. And you will also be studying Aqaid. Aqaid is one of the favorite subjects. It basically goes over the core beliefs of the Shia school of thought. Uh, starting off with Tawheed, then going to Nabuat, then Imamat, all the way down to the 12th Imam. But before you start studying these subjects, you need to be able to know Farsi because everything in Qom is taught in Farsi, all the subjects. Alif, B, P. The first year when you come, for six seven months I think, you learn Farsi and then after that you start these courses. And it's very, very humbling. Don't expect it to be easy. So basically, a lot of people when you come to Qom, they think that because this person is not able to get uh, achieve their secular education or they're not sharp enough, that's why they're coming to Qom. And, and people think it's really, really easy, the not Qum study. Easy, not like, easy. Don't expect it to be easy. Please, please, my dear brothers and sisters, respected elders, it is <laughs> not easy. Okay, some of the subjects are easy. But like, courses like Sarf and Nav, they're, as Muzaffar always says, it's really, really hard. Yeah. And then when it comes to Aqaid, there's a sense, there's a certain type of philosophy in there as well. So you're really going to have to use that brain of yours. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of memorization when it comes to history as well. Um, but then, look, the thing is, exactly as you yeah. just said, people undermine it. They think, oh, it's not that hard and, you know, you just go there and you sit under a leaf, of, yeah. you know, you just sit underneath a tree and contemplate and suddenly you, you get enlightenment. And for a lot of people, the education of Om is not valuable. Okay, look, my best friend here, studying here with me, in the same class as me, as, is an engineer. Um, and then I have a friend who is a doctor, two, two friends who are medical doctors. I know people like a uh, female who are like dentists and stuff. Right, They're alhamdulillah. Their One of them is working right here in, yeah. in the Islamic Pulse. And she's left everything, like she could have dentists, dentists earn a lot. She left everything, why? Just to come to home and study, you know, people are doing that. Yeah. And I think it should be appreciated, uh, I think it should be appreciated. Yeah. There's university yeah. lecturers yeah. studying here, there's professors I mean, studying here. They leave their jobs, they leave their money, everything, just to come 
come and study in Qom. Right, and even they find the studies challenging at times. Mm. So I guess that means that I'm not so thick for pulling out my hair over surf and now. Yeah. When you first come to Qom, you'll be studying the basics. So you'll be studying Farsi and then you'll move on to the basic foundation course. After that, it will depend on you as an individual. If you want to go and specialize in a certain subject, you'll be doing that further, further down the line. So some people want to specialize in fiqh, some people want to go down the philosophy route, some people want to study more in the historical uh, aspect of things, and some people want to go down the line of kalam and aqaid. What do you want to do? Like, what do you like? Me? Yeah. Oh, that, 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 to be continued. <laughs> to be continued. That's all we have time for today. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you have any questions at all, do send them to us, email them to us. And you can find us on social networking websites such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and now we have Snapchat and Telegram. And ShiaTV.net. Inshallah, from my wife, Sayyidah Fatima Ali. From my husband, Muzaffar Abbas Haider. We bid you Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wherever you are.